We live in a digital age where texting has become largely preferential to voice. The Verge's staff is scattered around the globe and as such, we spend a majority of our days, social and otherwise, in chat rooms and mail clients. But text only says so much, it never really conveys the right emotion, or any at all. You can always use a smiley face, but well, that isn't always clear either. So for a majority of our communication, we use GIFs. Lots of GIFs. I think I want to do that one. Yeah, I want to add that. But then I was I was riffing and didn't know where to go after that. <clears throat> Alright, I think I know how to do it. Okay. Think of it as an artisanal emoticon. Lighter than a video, heavier than a still, perhaps deeper than both. An unchanged container capturing human history. Or, you know, cat history. Making a GIF doesn't have to be that difficult at all. In fact, for the most basic things, we just use a still image in a web applet. Uh, some of our favorite ones include Blingy, which has a lot of extra gaudiness and flair. Uh, the other one we like is Deal With It, which, well... So we're gonna make a Blingy. All right, so let's go ahead and find the right picture. All right, now we've got Thomas Houston. So let's go ahead and start adding. Let's add a couple Dancing Santas over here. It's Christmas, so let's add some snow. Yeah, now that is the winner I like. Oh, he needs a hat. Oh, cats. Cats always work. All right, and now we're set. <laughs> Stills are nice, but video is really clutch. For us, it all starts with a video. Thankfully, there's a lot of quality apps that are do most everything you want to do. For OS X, we've been having fun with Gift Brewery. It's simple, it's intuitive, and about $5 in the app store is relatively cheap. For this example, we're gonna use The Verge's own David Pierce. The next step is arguably the most important. Find your moment. We look for moments that are useful in everyday chat. We typically like to find anything that can convey happiness, frustration, disappointment, or you know, when morale's low, just a good laugh. Frame rate is the other key factor here, and if your app lets you change it, we'd recommend starting at 12 frames per second and going from there. The trick to the perfect loop is isolation. As little bit of the moment in time as possible to really ensure continuity, or at least fake continuity. Excuse me. Now we have much fewer frames, and we've got a full, fluid David dance. Because of the limitations of the medium, captions really do play a huge part in maximizing the message. Obviously, there's no audio with a GIF, so let's focus on a subtitle. Now, for some apps, you can definitely do a frame-by-frame -frame text, but unfortunately for GIF Brewery, it's really all or nothing. So, let's go ahead and just make a party down David. All right, and with that, okay, hopefully your work of art is ready to be birthed. It's time to export and compress, and file size is very important here. As a hard and fast rule, we generally shoot for GIFs that are under one meg. Typically half that, but Tumblr's file size limit is one meg, and we think it's a good metric. Let's go ahead and really quickly, let's throw that on some kind of sharing site. So that's the basics, and it really should cover most of what you're going to want to do. Both the Verge video team and dev team swear by using professional software like Adobe's Photoshop, Premiere, After Effects, Apple's Motion. And it really makes sense when you think about it because these are professional software tools that are used to make high quality video and high quality stills. And the GIF just falls somewhere in between those two. Hey buddy, what you working on? Uh, hey. Uh, I'm just making this uh, advanced animated GIF here. So I'm gonna start this project in After Effects, uh, although I guess you could do this in Premiere or Final Cut Pro or any other video software, but I'm gonna go with After Effects today because we're gonna use a couple of the unique features of that program. So I've already imported my video clip. It's uh, David here, looking confused, uh, angry, sad. There's a range of emotions in this clip, I think. I'm gonna drag this onto a new comp within After Effects. I'm gonna trim it down a little bit. So I think it would be great to punctuate that moment by zooming in on him. And the reason I'm doing this in After Effects is because I'd like to apply some dramatic motion blur. So that's looking pretty good, but I want to punctuate this a little bit more. So of course, the font to use is Impact. 
David grows, David displays hamburger, and then it uh, cuts off there. So now I'm gonna export this, uh, but the trick here is to pick a frame rate that's pretty low. This thing started at 24 frames a second, but I'm gonna lower it down to 12 or 15 frames a second because, uh, as you'll see in the next step, keeping a GIF small in file size is key to making a successful GIF. So now that we're in Photoshop, I'm using CS6, so it'll handle video pretty well. We can scrub through it and check that everything looks okay. But the real trick here is using Save for Web. This is huge, so I'll have to resize this down to maybe 500 pixels wide. Another very important part of GIF making is making sure that it loops forever, not once. And now just to double check my work, I'm gonna throw that file into Chrome. Now it's looking pretty good to me. And now for the final step, see what David thinks. <laughs> So it looks to me like that was a successful GIF. All right, I know it sounds ridiculous, but in this modern age, we really do think of GIFs as a necessary tool for communication, for really conveying the right emotion and getting your message across. You know, at the right time, a GIF can be more of a personal statement and less of a random joke. Or, you know, just be a random joke. <laughs>